we're going to see how you can use elementary row operations to help you to evaluate determinants and what these operations do to a determinant. Suppose we have a matrix A, it's a 3 by 3 matrix, um, it's got these entries as written here, and it has determinant 5. And now we want to find the determinant of this matrix, which is sort of similar to A, but we can see each of the rows has been multiplied by something. So first we'll turn the first row into the first row of A, which means we'll divide that first row by 3. And we need to see what dividing the first row of the matrix by 3 will do to the determinant. So I'm going to just write down the matrix we would get after dividing the first row by 3, and then we'll have to fix the determinant. So we obtain this. The operation that we've done here is row 1 becomes row 1 divided by 3. Now, what's happened to the determinant? Think about expanding this determinant along the first row. Each term will have a 3, and we're pulling that 3 out to the front, and we'll get the determinant of this. And so we see that the determinant of this matrix is actually 3 times the determinant of this. You've made the determinant of this one a third smaller, so we have to fix that up, okay? Now we'll try it again with, um, actually I think I'm going to go up here. We'll try it again with the second row. To fix the second row to make it look like, the make it look like A, we'll take out a factor of 2, and that 2 will appear here. So this is equal to 6 times the determinant of the matrix A, B, C, D, E, F, minus G, minus H, minus I, and the operation we did was R2 becomes R2 divided by 2. So we can see we've almost got A, we just have to um, divide or multiply the, the third row by minus 1, and when we do this, we will have obtained A. So, again, the factor of minus 1 has to come out the front. And we get minus 6 determinant of, well, I could just write A, but maybe I should write it in full. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Let's pretend that was a bigger bracket. The operation we did was R3 becomes minus R3. So I guess we really divided 6 by minus 1 here. And we recognise this matrix as A. We know its determinant is 5. So we obtain the answer, minus 30. So uh, this is our next assignment to find the determinant of this matrix. And we can see it's been obtained from A by doing some row operations that subtract one multiple of a row from another. And this is great news for calculating determinants because that operation does not change the determinant of this matrix at all. So we can just reverse those operations until we obtain A. And we can see the first thing we should do is add row 3 to row 2. So the determinant of this matrix is the same as the determinant of the matrix that you get when you do that. So it's going to fix up the second row. The third row is already fixed. And we've still got up here A plus 2D, B plus 2E, and C plus 2F. The operation that we did, row 2 becomes row 2 plus row 3. And as I say, this is easy, it does not affect the determinant. So this is then going to be equal to the determinant of the matrix that you get by fixing up the first row, what should we do to it? We want to get A, B, C, so we should subtract twice row 2 from row 1. Okay? Um, the operation will be row 1 becomes row 1 minus 2 row 2. And I don't know why I left myself so much space. This is going to give us the matrix A. Um, which is this guy. And we know the determinant is 5, so the answer to this question is 5. Next, we'd like to find the determinant of this matrix. It has the same uh, rows as A, but in a different order. 
So we're just going to perform a couple of row swaps to get the order back to the same order as A. This is also easy. Every time you do a row swap, you simply multiply the determinant by minus 1. So perhaps let's swap the second and third rows here. Um, so this is minus 1, I'll just put it in a bracket, times the determinant of the result. We've swapped the second and third row. That's going to put G, H and I into the right position. And we've still got D, E, F up the top. The operation that we did, the elementary row operation, no, no we didn't, beg your pardon, we exchanged the second and third um, rows. Okay, now we're going to exchange the first and second rows, which will give us A. So another factor of minus 1 comes out the front. I'll just keep that there as minus 1 squared, um, but you can already see what's going to happen here. So we get our matrix capital A. The operation was row 1 was swapped with row 2. And because minus 1 squared is just 1, again, this is going to give us 1 times the determinant of A, which is 5. So the determinant of this matrix over there is 5. You just have to remember how many row swaps you performed. Now we want to find the determinant of 7 times A. So this is similar to part A where we multiplied, we had a, a row that was multiplied by a scalar. But here we've multiplied the entire uh, matrix A by, by 7. So what happens? Well, this is the determinant of, let's write the matrix out in full, 7A, 7B, 7C, 7D, 7E, 7F, 7G, 7H, 7I, and we can see that every row has been multiplied by 7. So just as we did in the first um, example, we could divide each of these rows by 7 and that will bring a factor of 7 to the front. Rather than step through all of this, we can just write the answer down. This is 7 cubed times the determinant of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, which is the determinant of A here. So it's 7 cubed times 5. I don't actually know what that number is, but you could look that up. So the point is, if you have an n by n matrix and you multiply it by a scalar, you'll get that scalar raised to the nth power here times the determinant of the matrix.